What's the word, y'all? The 2023 trade deadline is is about to it's about to be mid, y'all. Let's be real. Let's be real. Let's face the facts. Based on what we know today, this deadline is looking like it's going to be a dud. Shams dropped his article. The trade deadline is, what, February 9th or so, so it's right around the corner. And usually when Shams dropped these articles around this time, it's juicy. We hear about this player and this team and talking this and that. And, of course, we got something, but it ain't nothing compared to what we got over the last couple seasons. We have been spoiled by the in-season trade, and I think this season is going to be very similar to 2019. And it's going to be a lot of chatter, and nothing is going to happen. And I'm subverting my expectations expectations so if nothing does happen in the 2023 deadline i'm not mad about it but if something does happen and boom we all cloud nine about it as a content creator the trade deadline is 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 super important <laughs> so I, i'm listen we want big things to happen you know what i'm saying but we made that video a couple days ago about uh parody distorting reality that's what you're gonna see today but we don't talk about the things that sean wrote in this article but i do want to go take a trip down memory lane of the last couple trade deadlines so we can basically see how insane we have had it as nba fans at this time every season in 2022 y'all know that james hardy got traded from the brooklyn nets to the philadelphia 76ers and as you know this one was a lot deeper than one of the all-time greats in james Harden going to his third team in three third team in three seasons what's is that or was it third team in four seasons either way it was a lot deeper than that because uh it would have been rumored that james Harden requested a trade he came out and said he didn't request a trade and then he actually did request a trade and on the 76 side of the side of things ben simmons passed out of the shot not too long ago then decided he didn't want to play he had went to practice he had his phone in his pocket even though he refuted that report but it was a lot that was deeper than just the trade itself so he was eating his nba fans also on that same day out of nowhere poor Zingas got traded to the washington wizards this was a w trade that line one of the better ones we've ever had this, so this 2021 gives me hope for 2023 just a glimmer of hope because in the last second the orlando mads decided you know what we're done with being the eighth seed every single season we're gonna blow it up and we saw aaron gordon get traded to the Denver nuggets and he's playing at an also caliber level here in 2022 2023 uh vucevic got traded to chicago and it got people talking about the bulls for like three hours or so that was good times and in a moment as a bulls fan that it went through five years of a rebuild I was excited about this trade. Now we look back on 2023 and say, damn, Franz Wagner is pretty good. Window card is pretty good. That pick that they traded as top four protected looks pretty good. But in the moment, this was big for me as a Bulls fan and basically for the league because out of nowhere, a team decided, not out of nowhere, but a team actually decided to blow it up like on the last day or two of the deadline 2020 was a weird one but we did get one big trade that may not have seemed like a huge trade in the moment uh wiggins got traded to the warriors and obviously we know in 2022 he went on to win the championship he was the second best player on the championship team so this ended up being a way bigger deal than what it was in the moment so shout out to wiggs and then we get to 2019 oh i hated 2019 bro i vividly remember me and the boys did a live stream for 2019 because this was the year of the anthony davis rumors they were everywhere he, he was so ready to get out we did a whole live stream patiently waiting for anthony davis to be traded and he didn't get traded the biggest name being dealt was markel folks the second biggest name was marcus saw who helped him get a championship so that was a dub but it was like overall a a big <gasps> Oh, because Anthony Davis didn't actually get traded at the deadline. Obviously, he ended up getting traded a little bit down the line, and he got a championship. And then 2018 don't have the mega trade, but it, but it does have the, the, the Cavaliers rebuilding on the fly. The Cavaliers traded like 12 people at this deadline. They said, we're going to get Braun back in contention, um, and I, I mean it. You know, you know, you, are, you understand what happened. Oh, no, Blake Griffin got traded in 2018, too, and then, and then Blake Griffin went on to have his best individual season of all time when he got to Detroit. So, you know, there was a, there was a few hit hitters here now. But this year, I'm not feeling none of that. Shams dropped this article, and I'm reading through it like, damn, we about to just see John Collins maybe get traded. That might be the biggest name. Because the, the <laughs> things are so weird in Atlanta right now that John Collins has been on the market for so long that they told this man and his agent, y'all go find the deal. Because we didn't talk to all 29 other GMs and we can't figure out a deal that we like that puts us in a position to be successful. So you do it. You do our work, John. If you want out, which I don't think he's ever actually said, but if, if we are going to trade you, you better get us a good deal. That is so wild to me. And maybe it's happened in NBA history before and I just don't know. But like a team telling this man, you and your age and find yourself a deal is crazy. Because if John Collins get a deal that he's getting traded to Brooklyn, 
The Atlanta Hawks just gonna, they gonna say no because the the way they value John Collins is not what the league is valuing him. But me and the guys have been saying this. John Collins are going to another team and he gonna be back to being a really good player. Right now, he just doesn't get the touches. He just averaged 20 and 10 like two years ago. I do believe a new change of scenery will help him. But them telling him to go figure it out yourself is wild to me. So Shams opened up his article. I'm not going to show you it because it's behind a paywall and I don't want The Athletic to sue me. I don't think they would, but I'm not even going to take no chances. He opens up talking about John Collins and Jay Crowder still being on the trading block. And, and the fact that this was the first sentence of this article makes me sad. And the next sentence is crazy. However, one organization emerges at the deadline as a key hub for the entire NBA, which is true. We saw that with the Orlando Magic a few years ago, a team that normally sells the deadline. He's saying it's going to be the Spurs. The Spurs. This, listen, no disrespect to some of the people we are going to name. Jakob is, is, Jakob is the best name available. But like a Dougie McBuck is Josh Richardson. Those are cool names or whatever. But like, if a team trades for Josh Richardson, and that is how I got to open up my trade deadline video, I'm going to be pissed. Along the Spurs, the Charlotte Hornets are an organization that many across the league are keeping an eye on for being a potential seller. The Hornets, though, they're really, and I mean really, really bad. They have pieces that I would be interested in as a GM, depending on, of course, where my team is. Like Terry Rozier is a good player under contract for a long time. It's a big deal. Four years, $97 million, That's a lot of money. But Terry Rozier is a guy that can, that can score in bunches obviously something he might be taking way more shots than you want him to take now in charlotte but like if you're trading for him you're not getting from that high volume guy you, you're gonna you're gonna subvert that a little bit you're gonna be muting that a little bit but he's a good name mason Plumley, i think can go to a team and be a really really good backup because at this point in his career i don't see mace anybody that's training for mason Plumley thinking that they're gonna throw him into the starter lineup but as a backup mason Plumley would be one of the best backup centers in basketball depending on where he ends up going pascal siakam ojana nobi frevively and gary trent jr are people that these executives are eyeing in case they decide to move one of their cornerstone pieces and cj mccollum says something very interesting on his podcast a couple days ago saying that he is really really confident that the raptors are going to be trading one of their core pieces now in my mind the core pieces are those four people that they mentioned obviously they're not going to trade scotty so pascal og freddie or gary trent jr fred van vliet is up for um a free agency this offseason he wants a lot of money gary trent jr also up for free agency he's probably gonna want a lot of money and it feels like a deal is definitely to be made with them being uh, uh one of the more disappointing teams in my personal eyes because i thought they were going to be really solid this year so it makes sense they would make a deal but the fact that cj mccullum who's the president of like the p the basketball pa whatever the hell his title is him saying that on his podcast means a little something because he's obviously tapped in if he's the president or whatever speaking of presidents look pa pass past the politics we don't do that on this channel this picture is hard as hell past the politics it don't actually don't even look real it looks like somebody photoshopped them together but this picture is hard shout out to the warriors on their um uh white house visit he, he mentioned that the atlanta hawks would be interested in malik beasley and, and jared vanderbilt in a john collins trade which surprises me if this trade happens i'll be surprised because I didn't think that John Collins' value was Malik Beasley, who's one of the most high-value three-point shooters in basketball right now, and Jared Vanderbilt, who is a high-energy, good defensive, good rebounding, and now he's hitting threes and he's playmaking a little bit more. I didn't think that John Collins' value would be those two pieces, and if it does, then, wow, the Atlanta Hawks walk out of here a winner, if you ask me. Um, but, I mean, that that's if the deal happens. Everybody and their grandma is interested in Bojan Bogdanovic. We knew that before. It's just a matter of what they'll accept, if they'll accept anything. John Wall's potentially on the move because they're looking for a backup big to, for Zubac. The Timberwolves are trying to make a decision about D'Angelo Russell. And I, I think I'm going to make an entire Timberwolves video soon. Um, because their situation is very good. It's very obvious that D'Angelo Russell is a good basketball player. He just doesn't fit what they want to do. And his comments in the media recently and the fact that this we're reporting on this now, that he unfollowed the Timberwolves on social media, he's out the door. It's just a matter of what the Minnesota Timberwolves want to do with him and would they be okay with getting somebody that is viewed as a lesser player but might fit with the Timberwolves more. Because I do believe they need a, a head steady point guard that is not a guy that needs a lot of touches. And D'Angelo Russell, again, is a good basketball player. I don't want y'all to interpret that any other way. But he's, 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 he has a very obvious play style, and I just don't think it fits with the Rudy. I don't think it fits with the Anthony Edwards um, and the other constructions of this team. The Suns and Magic are emerged as potential free agent suitors for Fred Van Vliet um and, and me and the guys oh man i just have so many ideas for videos and let me tease one me and the guys are talking about um how long can you rebuild before your fans get antsy 
right? And of course, the Orlando Magic is more, like if they're interested in Fred Van Vliet, this is not obviously completing the rebuild, <laughs> but it's like them finally after what was it? I can't even say finally. They did the Bulls trade in 2021, so two years. They're like, okay, we got Franz, we got Palo, we got Wendell, we got whatever this next lottery pick is going to be. I think it's time for us to stop looking at lottery odds and start trying to put together a competent roster more competent because they've been good recently a more competent roster and it seemed like that's what they're doing and i want to start talking about those timelines that's a video for another day and you talk about mike Conley a little bit how the clippers are interested the timberwolves are interested and and that's th those are the biggest rumors in basketball right now yeah that's it that was the biggest rumors in basketball i ain't know you know what i'm saying this star is uh, it's disgruntled every star of the league right now is happy as can be and and nobody no no phoenix suns talking now you mentioned Jay Crowder. My fault. Rafael Nadal just got eliminated in the second round. God damn. Straight sets. Sheesh. Um, you mentioned Jay Crowder, but the Suns are a team that should be doing something. There's not a peep to them. And I'm hoping that GMs just keeping their mouth closed and not really telling Sh Shams nothing because we need something. Because right now it looks grim. I do want to apologize for the lack of um, consistency over here. I've, I've been doing so much stuff between this channel, gaming channel, the other channel. I'm kind of... Uh, what's, what's the word? stretch thin um obviously there's only a certain amount of time in a day and obviously i got to allocate some most of that time a good of a portion portion of that time to family and my daughter and stuff so i i will admit that i haven't been uploading here as much as i want to but i'm, I'm really starting to get into the groove of things a little bit more and um just know that just know just know that just know that we're, we're back we back on the grind baby appreciate y'all